For the management of anterior clenoid bone loss leading to instability, the most commonly described procedures are either the eden hibernet procedure using an iliac crest bone graft or a coracoid transfer. The principle behind both of these procedures is extending the glenoid arc and for the coracoid transfer the conjoint tendon adds an additional dynamic sling which is particularly for useful for patients with soft tissue loss. However, whilst both of these procedures are commonly described, their frequency of use differs significantly. If you put a latch into a PubMed search, you come up with 1,115 results. And if you do the same thing with Eden Hibernet, you come up with just 42 results. The 20th citation is from 1997, so that there have been less than 20 citations on Eden Hibernet in the last 20 years. I've tended to use the latch as my go-to procedure for anterior glenoid bone loss, but have used the Eden Hibernet in the revision situation as suggested by Walsh in his paper from 2008. This difference may be due to the fact that surgeons don't like to take an iliac crest bone graft, but the coracoid transfer is technically more challenging and does alter the anatomy. However, the development of a new arthroscopic technique to undertake an Eden Hibernet using suture buttons may begin to redress this balance. A bank art repair was originally described as an open procedure, but as arthroscopic techniques were developed and instruments and implants improved, it's now got to the situation that an arthroscopic bank art repair is superior to an open repair. A similar process was expected to occur for the latter day procedure. An arthroscopic procedure was described about 10 to 15 years ago. However, despite an improvement in technique, most surgeons still prefer to undertake an open latter day. One of the main reasons for this is an open bank art repair requires a subscapularis split, whilst an arthroscopic procedure doesn't require the subscapularis to be breached and is undertaken through the rotator interval, so they are actually technically two different procedures. However, a subscapularis split is required for both an open and an arthroscopic lache procedure, so there is in fact no difference between the two techniques, which may explain why the results for an open and an arthroscopic lache appear to be very similar. A recent study published by Emilio Calvo, who is very experienced in arthroscopic lache procedures, showed that there was still a 10% deficit in subscapularis function, a minimum of two years down the line when compared to the non-operated side. The same situation applies for an open or arthroscopic Eden Hibnay procedure using screw fixation. However, a new suture button arthroscopic Eden Hibnay technique has been described which allows the procedure to be done through the rotator interval without going through subscapularis. For this technique, a 20 by 10 by 10 mm tricortical iliac crest graft is loaded into a clamp. Using the guide, two 2.9 mm drill holes are then made 10 mm apart. Two suture buttons are then loaded onto the graft, and then this is pulled through a 50 mm cannula which will be used for the procedure to make sure that the graft easily slides through. The drill holes for the graft can be made arthroscopically using a retrograde jig. This is a revision procedure in a left shoulder viewing for the anterior lateral portal, the glenoids initially being prepared. The jig is then inserted over a slit cannula posteriorly and placed in position. Drills are then passed through the guide 10 millimetres apart and shuttle sutures are passed retrograde and pulled out through the front through the 15 millimetre cannula. These are, then these are then attached to the tails of the graft and carefully pulled through. It's careful to check suture management. Once the tails have been pulled through then the graft is carefully delivered longitudinally into the joint it needs to be flipped into position. Once we're happy with position, the sutures are tightened and suture buttons then applied using a tensioner of 100 newtons. End of the procedure, the graph can be carefully fine-tuned and this is a revision procedure, but in the normal situation, the capsule can be repaired onto the front of the glenoid, making this an extra articular repair. This bone block model demonstrates how the sutures are passed through posterior buttons and then tied. Deverner has published his results on 26 patients with an average follow-up of 29.6 months. There were no redislocations and the average Walsh to play was 93.2 and the row was 96.4. Had a 92.3% graft healing rate on CT scan.
An arthroscopic Eden hip and knee procedure using a suture button fixation is anatomically different from an open procedure as the subscapularis is not breached. The procedure is usually undertaken using a tricortical autograft from the anterior superior iliac spine or from the lateral end of the clavicle. However, allograft and now xenograft horse bone blocks have been used very successfully. The indications of an arthro eden for non-contact patients and particularly for overhead athletes where loss of external rotation which does occur with the coracoid transfer is important to avoid. I found suture button fixation to be very useful when undertaking revision cases with retained glenoid metalwork. In this particular case a previous latte procedure has failed and the screw shafts have broken off and are retained within the glenoid. Not only do the suture buttons require a smaller 2.9mm drill, but in certain situations it is possible from a CT scan to work out a predetermined drill guide position to avoid the metalwork. This is that same patient after they've had a revision Eden Hibernet procedure and you can see how the suture buttons have been able to bypass the metalwork. We've recently published a series of 10 revision cases in the Journal of Shoulder and Elbow Surgery. The other potential area where the suture buttons are advantageous is patients with associated osteoarthritis. This is a CT scan of a 32-year-old patient who'd had a failed soft tissue procedure who was complaining of recurrent instability and moderate pain, although he did have advanced OA changes on his scan. Due to the high likelihood that this patient was going to require a joint arthroplasty at some point, we chose not to do a Lachey procedure which would distort the anatomy but to undertake an Eden Hibernate using the suture buttons. At six months there was good bone integration and there's no metalwork left in his glenoid for his inevitable arthroplasty procedure in the future. In summary, for the management of anterior glenoid bone loss, an Eden Hibernate procedure is a good option for non-contact athletes. An arthroscopic procedure using suture buttons is better than an open procedure. It requires smaller drill holes and has no metalwork, which can be useful for revision surgery with retained glenoid metalwork and is something to consider for patients with osteoarthritis. If you'd like to see more talks on the management of glenoid bone loss or any other aspects of shoulder surgery, visit my YouTube channel Cambridge Shoulder or my website cambridgeshoulder.co.uk.